On this week's episode of Craftsman's Corner from the NMLRA, we're going to show you how to make this small camp axe sheath based on an original from the 18th century. We'll be using this small camp axe as reference to make the sizing correct for this sheath. Because I've not made one of these before, I'm going to show you how I like to go through and make a pattern out of an old cereal box. I start out by tracing the head and a little bit of the handle with a number two pencil. And then I work on drawing a border around that initial tracing about half an inch out. This is going to give me enough room for the axe to fit in once we stitch everything together. Here I'm using the ruler to extend the edge of the handles straight up through the pattern just so I know where the handles are in relation to the flap that we're going to fold over later. Now here when I'm making this curve after completing the project I realized I needed a little bit more room on the left hand side so be sure you go with that first line like I have sketched there and make sure you have enough material to cover your axe blade. If you go with that inner line it's not too big of a deal you just might not get a full closure of your sheath flap. I'm cutting things out here with a combination of my knife and scissors, just whatever makes it easy. And here I'm scoring where that flap is going to fold over on the cardboard, just so I can get a better visualization of the shape of that sheath before we move on to leather. For leather on this project, I'm using this thick cowhide. It's the same leather that I used on the flintlock lock cover video. You'll notice here I switch patterns. I actually made the pattern on the right before I made the pattern on the left for the video, and I like the extra material that I have on the pattern on the right, so I'm going to be moving forward with that pattern. I'm tracing it onto the leather with that Markall kind of metalworking pencil that I talked about in the flint wallet video. This pencil marks on just about everything and I find that it leaves a good mark on leather that isn't permanent. I can kind of rub this away the same I would with charcoal or lead from a pencil, but it's a little bit brighter. Not wanting to waste leather, I still have this attached to the full hide, so I struggle a little bit with cutting it out. If you have smaller scraps or smaller pieces of leather, it's going to be a little bit easier to cut all of these pieces out. Now, at this point in the video, I realized that I had traced the front flap backwards, so I had to invert it real quick, and then I went forward and, and cut it out. After lining it up here, I notice I have a few little flanges of leather sticking out, so I'm going to go through and clean those up. With everything lined up, we're ready to cut out the small loop that's going to hold our flap tongue down. Depending on the size of your flap, this loop will be different. What I shoot for is half inch to a three quarter inch wide loop to keep that tongue down. Next, I'm getting out my wood burner. The original that I'm basing this off of has a small cut groove about a quarter of an inch all the way around the main flap. So I'm using a white charcoal pencil here to go around, and I'm just kind of eyeballing this, it doesn't need to be perfect, going around the edges of the main flap here, marking where I'm going to burn. And then I also do that on the front flap. Here you can see my loop just kind of laid across there. Before I use a wood burner, I always like to test it with a scrap of the material I'm using just to make sure it's hot enough. If it's too cold, it's really going to stutter and not make a clean line, and I'm really shooting for a nice clean line all the way around. When doing something like this, I'm always looking for a place where I can pull the line towards me. I find that if I push the line, I don't have enough control. So you'll see here, I'm always pulling that wood burner back towards me, even around these curves. I flip it around just like that and bring the curve around, always pulling. With these lines burned in on the flaps, we're ready to move on to dyeing these pieces. I'm going to be using the same 50-50 leather dye and rubbing alcohol mix that we talked about in the previous leather working videos. This idea comes by way of Jeff Luke, who taught me this at his November bag making class at the NMLRA Education Center. Mixing the dye with rubbing alcohol dilutes it a little bit so you get a little more mileage out of your bottle of dye, but it doesn't seem to affect the color at all in any way that I've found. Next, we've got to figure out how we're going to attach a strap to these leather pieces. I'm going to be using this canvas strap. It's about an inch wide. It's small, but perfect for a small accoutrement like this. So to design the leather pieces that are going to attach to the sheath and the strap, I'm tracing the thickness of the strap onto another piece of cereal box cardboard, and then I'm drawing out a pattern for the leather piece that I'm going to use to attach the strap to the sheath. 
to add a little decoration to these pieces, I'm making the top of them a nice heart. And this will be more evident when we stitch this together. The next thing we need are the welts to preserve the stitching in the sheath. To do this, I'm tracing the front half of the sheath onto a thinner piece of leather. This is gonna provide the protection we need, but be a little thinner and not add bulk to the sheath overall. With those drawn on there, we're gonna cut these out and dye them, and being sure to dye the edges. This is just gonna make for a nice clean look across the board for the sheath. Next, we're going to attach the small heart pieces that we made to attach the strap. I'm marking the top of our front piece on the back of the sheath, just so I know where that sheath is going to lay as it hangs. And this is gonna inform how I can lay these heart-shaped pieces on here, just so they're not too high or too low, and they're kind of balanced on the sheath. Before I set these with glue, I just wanna check and make sure that they're in the right spot. You'll notice that I have them kind of angled outward at the top. This is gonna let the sheath sit more comfortably at my side as I carry it. If I put it straight up and down, it's going to kink the strap a little bit and not lay as comfortably. I'm using Tight Bond 3 wood glue on this. I like using Tight Bond. I know that it's wood glue, but I find that it's super sticky and gives a nice hold. I'm going to use this for the welts as well, and then I'm going to clamp this all down with some binder clips to ensure that we get a nice bond. This tight bond sets up in about half an hour, but it's a better bet to wait 45 minutes to an hour before you start working with this again. After waiting patiently, I'm ready to move on, so I'm gonna mark where I'm going to punch the holes for the stitching on both the strap loop and the leather art pieces on the back. They're gonna hold everything together. Following Jeff Luke's rule, we're going to cut four to five times the length of the stitching just to make sure we have enough thread. I'm using a traditional saddle stitch on all of these leather projects. This is just a period correct, but also a super sturdy way to stick. I highly recommend it if you're doing any leather work and you want the piece that you're working on to last, to just take the extra time and do that saddle stitch all the way around and be sure to back stitch three to four stitches at the end just to make sure that nothing comes undone. With our front and back pieces here ready to go, glued up and ready to dry, we're going to move on and use a pair of dividers to mark off where we're going to punch for the stitch holes that are gonna piece all of this together. Jumping ahead here, I finished all the stitching. I used that same saddle stitch that we talked about all the way around, provided a nice finished look for everything. Moving on to stitching up these straps, I'm going to mark off a heart shape inside of the leather piece lying it up to make sure that the stitching is going to catch as much of that woven strap as possible for maximum strength. Then for this, I'm just using a small awl to go around the pencil marks just to make sure I keep everything in line. And then I'm going to use a couple of these little, little clampy, pinchy guys there, I guess, to hold everything together as I begin stitching around this strap. Don't cut corners here. Be sure you're still using that saddle stitch all the way around. Before I stitch that other side up, I'm going to put on the sheath and make sure I get the length correct for where I want this sheath to sit. Now, if you're worried about maybe putting on some extra pounds here for winter, you'll wanna make sure that you make this strap adjustable. I'm taking a gamble here, so we're just gonna do this all as one piece. And there you have it. That stitched heart adds a nice little detail to an otherwise pretty plain sheath. Now I'm gonna trim the edges of that web strap and move on to dyeing all of the stitching and the edges that we missed early on, just to make sure that we have everything nice and cleaned up. One of the final things that we're gonna do for the leather is cover it in a nice layer of Neat's Foot Oil. Now you can find this at just about every farm store out there. It's used to treat saddles and bridles from horses, but it's just going to put some oil in the leather, make it a little stronger, a little tougher, and it's going to put a nice kind of matte finish on it. Um, as far as all of your leather goods go, everything that you make or use, you're going to want to treat with Neat's Foot Oil every now and then just to extend the life of your leather, especially if you have something that's drying out or starting to crack, you want to be sure to coat it with some Neat's Foot Oil. I didn't like the strong contrast between the color of the leather and the white of the strap, so I'm taking some mixed down leather dye that I had that's a weird kind of mixture of a bunch of leftover bottles, and I've mixed it up with probably 75% alcohol and 25% leather dye, and I'm just covering this strap with that dye just to give it a more aged and a 
just a more cohesive look across the board. Now it looks very green on the screen, but it actually dyed kind of a nice burnt umber or an orange, as you can see here in the final shot. Overall, this project probably took me four or five hours. I'll admit it was the first time I've done a sheath like this with the additions of the strap and the wood burning. So it did take some extra time, but it's a great little project to add another piece to your kit and kill an afternoon. If you're enjoying these videos and want to get some hands-on learning from professionals, check out nmlra.org education to see our current class offerings.